construction. <coughs> how do we, uh, once we have identified what we are actually looking for for the client, how we can structure it and how we can price it. So uh, again, we go and we try to break down the product into its individual components. Uh, you can see the client in the bottom right. He has a specific need, a specific wish. He comes to us as a private bank, as a distributor, and requests a specific uh, payoff. And what we do, we will be speaking to several lead managers. I'll be showing this to you in some slides later on, who in turn will be structuring and assembling the product on their side. So for the client, he only has one single point of contact. We as a distributor approach several counterparties and they themselves take care of the actual structuring. Uh, one example how you could uh, perhaps uh, extract value, uh, you can see on the treasury side, uh, sometimes we will see that funding levels are far above the actual CDS spreads currently recorded in the market, i.e. they're paying you more even though the market uh, perceives them as less risky. So this in our view is a, a quite a nice relative value trade. Uh, or you know that a calculation agent, which is responsible for the option component in the structured product, uh, might have a specific trading axe, as mentioned earlier, or uh, at this point we could mention the so-called risk recycling. Traders might have some non-hedgeable risk on their books that they would like to get rid of because they cannot hedge it themselves. Historically, they would have uh, sold or bought some kind of uh, uh, OTC option from a hedge fund or another investment bank that is willing to take the risk or perceives that they are capable of hedging it. But uh, nowadays, a lot of calculation agents or lead managers decide, why don't we offer it in the retail market as well? One specific example, we saw something called a stability note. It paid you... Um, a fixed interest rate over a certain period, uh, I think maturity uh, tenor was two years and it paid you LIBOR plus uh, 300 basis points uh, on a quarterly basis, but uh, annualized of course now. The risk for the client was that if at any day, I think the Euro stocks was underlying, the Euro stocks dropped by more than 10 percentage points from opening, client would actually be short a daily resetting 10 times leveraged put with an at the money strike. So, uh, in our opinion, this was definitely not suitable for retail investors because basically they are selling to an investment bank a tail risk hedge instead of buying it, which they should be doing because I don't think retail investors are more capable than a hedge fund to risk uh, to uh, manage tail risk. What we also look at is whether or not the uh, investment bank is actually able of uh, structuring, pricing, hedging the option component themselves or if they use an external counterparty uh, because in this case what we will have is an illiquid OTC contract between these two parties and if we are trying to get rid of the note for some reason, the client needs liquidity or is uh, scared or something or wants to take profit, we go to the lead manager and suddenly we find out, oops, I'm sorry, but the product isn't as liquid as you expected in the first place. I can give you one example. We did a, uh, an amortizing dynamic inflation adjusted bond linked to Swedish inflation for a pension fund. And uh, what happened was the inflation component had been outsourced by the issuer. So when the uh, pension fund decided they wanted to restructure their financing, their balance sheet, they actually had to <laughs> Uh, abandon those plans and wait for market moving in their favor for the OTC contract to become more liquid. So this is something that should just be kept in mind when either purchasing or selling structured products, that there is a multi-dimensional layer to, to what you should be looking at uh, when there is a, a, what kind of risk could be involved. Um, Actually, I think this slide ties in nicely to what we heard this morning, the definition of structured product, uh, because for us also it is sort of a portfolio strategy. We would go further and say it is a securitized portfolio strategy. Um, and we have taken a very simplified example uh, for a, a simple capital guaranteed product linked to some form of equity or index. Uh, so um, you will see client has on the left hand side 100% of his notional which he brings to the distributor. Then there will be some kind of structuring cost involved, the fee or kickback that the distributor takes for going through all of this uh, work. Then obviously you will have the uh, call option component and 
the zero coupon bond. Uh, we take the zero coupon bond the, because the discounted uh, fees in the front are taken to finance the call option and the structuring cost. This obviously is very simplified because we know that uh, due to uh, uh, fluctuations in the credit risk, you can have fluctuations in the uh, price of your bond. And of course, the time value of an option will not be moving linearly because uh, uh, volatility doesn't stand still. And then ideally, in the end, you will have back 100% of your bond and hopefully also return on investment. Uh, and by breaking down structured products into its components, it enables us to have greater transparency and understand where there could be potentially hidden risks within the structured products. And when I'm talking about risk, I'm not, I'm not only addressing financial or economic risk, there's credit risk, there's operational risk, there's fiscal risk, legal risk, etc. So we try to cover all of these dimensions.